you know, I, I wish I didn't have to end on a downer, uh, but uh, that is the information that I have. So, um, you know, we started the day, uh, like FAO did start the day um, assessing risk to infrastructure. So a uh, very detailed uh, assessment, lots of information shared. Uh, I'm, I'm presenting information that's a little bit higher level, looking at um, systemic risk across uh, what is a really critical sector in the region of Peel um, and, and to the lo local economy in Peel, which is uh, goods movement. So uh, like many municipalities, uh, and many, many of them were here, Region Appeal is paying greater attention to climate change. The Office of Climate Change and Energy Management was formed in 2018 uh, to champion change through the implementation of our Climate Change Master Plan. It's not the only thing we do, but uh, we, we do form partnerships and we do uh, you know, engage activities when requested like this particular study. But whenever we do initiate a project, we always start the climate climate change conversation with a simple like what if so what if a highway is built uh, sprawl like growth is accelerated emissions rise these are questions that were posed what if we mandate net zero building standards for all new construction in peel um, what if we increase investments in, in green infrastructure so i'll start this presentation with the question that was posed by us uh, to us by a few of our elected officials who were sitting on a uh, risk and audit committee. What if climate change impacts disrupted the movement of goods and supply chains? And what would be the economic costs? Kind of a big question to ask. And, you know, we took a while for us to scope exactly what, how to answer it. But I'll present what we did here. So to answer the question, uh, the region appeal Office of Climate Change, Energy Management, brought in uh, TRCA. Um, so they have some resource on flood risk and some uh, additional re uh, ca capacity and expertise on uh, climate change assessments. Uh, and also uh, brought in a, cons we, we hired a um, consultant firm uh, from the University of Waterloo, Terrametrics Lab in 2021. Uh, to conduct a literature review of key risks and hazards and impacts to the movement of goods within the Great Lakes region. And we also proposed a, fr a framework to evaluate the economic costs of it impacts. So why assess the risks to goods movement? So the, you know, don't need to explain because it's been presented a lot today about uh, the impacts of climate change that we're seeing. Climate related disasters are on the rise. Um, you know, I do a lot of talks and presentations and unfortunately there's often more, uh, you know, uh, times where you could refer, refer to a, a, you know, catastrophic event than you'd like. Uh, and of course we had, um, you know, a couple big massive events happened recently, Hurricane Ian, and Fiona together caused as much as 48 billion uh, on most recent estimates and insured losses in Canada and the US. And then, you know, as we were developing uh, this, this particular study um, at the same time, uh, November, 2021, after an atmospheric river brought intense rainfall across Southern British Columbia, it caused catastrophic flooding, leaving thousands of people stranded on highways or cut off from food supplies for days due to road and rail lines being washed out. And the event it disrupted supply chains by halting road and rail transport, increasing the cost of goods across Canada and led to infrastructure damage amounting to approximately 7.5 billion. So obviously climate change is real, it's here and it's affecting the movement of goods. So maintaining an efficient and uninterrupted movement of goods into and out of the region appeal is critical to the local economy employment and broader economic stability of the Great Lakes region as a whole. The good movement sector adds approximately, oops, sorry. Uh, goods movement sector adds approximately 49 billion annually to Ontario's GDP with 1.8 billion mean, being moved through the region every day. And if we include manufacturing, 
the sector accounts for about four out of nine jobs in the region of Peel. Uh, goods are moved through a variety of modes, which are distributed through several intermodal hubs across the GTA, including a CN Brampton rail line. Um, so M MTO uh, does work with us, collaborates on uh, various surveys. Um, there was one that was done in about 2015. Um, and uh, it, uh, it, it looked at um, the trucks on, on 400 series highways across Ontario, and then they estimate the value of goods carried. So the last survey that was done um, indicated trucks in Peel carry a total of 3.2 million tons of goods through Peel. Uh, the Peel road network serves more than 50% of the uh, almost 1 uh, million weekly truck trips in Ontario. A total of uh, 8.6 million vehicle kilometers are driven by trucks on a weekly basis on Peel roads. Uh, and uh, Ontario accounts for two quarters or two thirds of total US Canada trade value. International trips are significant to Peel as 18% of the weekly Ontario US truck traffic start and end in Peel, representing about 1.3 billion and uh, 227,000 tons of goods and 49,000 truck trips. So you can see why maintaining an efficient movement of goods is vital to local economy, jobs, and growth. So how is climate change uh, gonna affect the sector? So researchers from the Waterloo's uh, Terra Metrics Research Lab conducted a scan of scholarly and gray literature published in North America focusing on climate change impacts to goods movement within the Great Lakes region, which included the region appeal. Key climate hazards and related impacts were grouped thematically, described qualitatively in a, in a report. Um, the assessment methods were reviewed and a framework was developed with stakeholders. Uh, while the, this effort has produced important information to guide future assessments in Peel, you know, more granular, uh, locations or sector specific results um, were not out of scope. So we did find that um, extreme precipitation, storms, extreme heat, freeze thaw cycles with some caveats uh, and compounding events are likely to expose road, rail, train stations and terminals to increased damage. Uh, these impacts will likely affect the local economy, health, well-being and productivity of the workforce. So Getting a little bit more detailed, granular, and the results, extreme precipitation, flooding, and erosion um, are likely to become more frequent and intense. It's gonna overwhelm stormwater riverine systems, causing overland flooding to impact road and rail infrastructure. These effects are likely to result in serious disruption of traffic, movement of goods, increased public and healthy, health and safety risk, Increases in flooding resulting from more sudden intense rainfall will also accompany greater erosion impacting adjacent infrastructure. Uh, uh, higher than average extreme heat days. So we're gonna, we're gonna see more frequent extreme heat as well as average increases year, uh, in, in year round temperatures leading to impacts on infrastructure and workforce and users of intermodal transport systems. Heat waves are likely to affect economic activity, both in transportation of time sensitive goods and increased transportation costs. Increased labor and equipment will, re build, will be required to repair and maintain roads affecting, affected by buckling and cracking and extreme heat will also increase the likelihood of transportation equipment like tires to wear and fail faster. Uh, the productivity of the workforce may be affected by higher temperatures due to increased heat stress and the need for more frequent breaks, deteriorating uh, working conditions at workplaces like warehouses, mobility units without air conditioning, and truck and freight trailers can reduce the availability of working hours, cause labor shortages, reduce productivity, thereby affecting the profitability of the goods movement sector as a whole. And finally, freeze-thaw cycles. Though FAO said that there's gonna be a reduction in, in freeze-thaw cycles in the short term in Peel anyway, uh, we're gonna expect to see an increase in the number of freeze-thaw cycles within the next five to 10 years, which will exacerbate 
the degradation of transportation infrastructure, increasing repair costs and maintenance. So these are the key risks that we've sort of uh, identified, uh, but there's also compounding extreme events. Um, so we'll uh, expect to experience increased events such as higher water levels in and around Lake Ontario, coupled with flooding from extreme precipitation. A combination of drought and heat waves may also result in increased energy demand and food supply issues within the Great Lakes, leading to higher costs of living. As current supply chains in the region of Peel are already under stress due to the lack of needed investment, intermodal transportation infrastructure, compounding climate change hazards will further exacerbate the situation. So those, that, that provides a real high level summary of the, uh, the results. We have a report that um, I'm happy to share um, that gets into the details on the assessment and the methods. Um, but we did, as part of the process, develop a framework to then actually conduct an economic uh, evaluation of all of these hazards and impacts. Uh, this, this is the uh, sort of outline that we, we, uh, we created. So it outlines a process to conduct detailed analysis of Peel-specific data to generate cost estimates of damages to infrastructure, loss of productivity, health impacts on people, as well as disruption to businesses resulting in economic losses. So, hopefully I'm uh, on time. Um, that ends my uh, presentation. So through this research and review of available literature, the impacts of climate hazards to the movement of goods in Peel region has clear implications to the local economy, health and well-being, productivity of the workforce. The study and assessment framework has enabled the region of Peel to initiate a more detailed assessment of climate risks to regional road infrastructure. Um, so this has prompted some recognition that we need to kind of, uh, you know, get our own house in order. So maybe next year I'll come back and present the results of that assessment. So I'll end where I started and, um, you know, invite you, uh, just like uh, hopefully you've done today, to ask yourselves what if in your own work, what you do, so you, you too can prepare for climate change impacts. I've uh, just thrown out a few what ifs here that may have some resonate with uh, some of you. And these are the types of questions that we as an office sometimes ponder uh, in our work. So thanks, I'm open, you know, welcome any, any questions anybody has. Thanks so much. <laughs> um, well, in my presentation, uh, I started with a question on, um, you know, uh, what would be the impact of a new highway? Um, on uh, our, our environmental footprint, um, you know, uh, this is a question that we were actually posed uh, and is a controversial one, uh, but um, our office uh, was tasked with uh, attempting to answer that question uh, on behalf of uh, regional council. Um, of, of course, it, it wasn't definitive, but uh, we did find that, uh, you know, obviously greenhouse gas emissions are gonna rise. There may be some impacts to, um, the uh, uh, availability of a permeable sp uh, space that would increase risk downstream. Uh, so, you know, from a climate change perspective, uh, you know, putting a uh, 4, 413 highway in um, to the region of Peel may not be the most climate wise choice. Uh, and that, that is basically what uh, we um, sort of submitted uh, to council. Um, and, um, you know, uh, there, there's a, a lot of debate, I guess, on that subject um, in, uh, in Peel. Um, but uh, from a climate change perspective, uh, thinking forward, uh, maybe there's some alternative ways of moving people and goods that, you know, protects green space, farmland. Um, so th that would be kind of, you know, 
uh, locking us in to um, massive investments in infrastructure to that extent, uh, you know, may not be the wisest use of public funding from a climate change perspective. Um, and of course, the knock-on effects of all the development and sprawl uh, that would happen um, as a result of that. Uh, it's not the direction I would say is uh, climate friendly. So that's one example. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, great question. So I would say, you know, uh, you're getting into kind of circular economy stuff. Uh, and coincidentally, um, we uh, just formed kind of a, a committee in Peel. Uh, we're participating in the Circular Cities Initiative, uh, and we just joined... Um, uh, Dutch Canadian um, circular economy um, network, uh, Peel formally joined um, research and policy group there uh, to sort of start to strategize and build out um, uh, an approach to circularity uh, in Peel. Uh, and I'm part of that. Um, so uh, obviously, if you, you know, um, take a comprehensive holistic approach and achieve circularity, uh, we as an office may not necessarily need to exist because uh, that would address many, many of the you know problems um, if we actually didn't use sort of virgin source materials. We reuse uh, and minimize the amount of waste uh, in our existing um, infrastructure. So um, if you want to reach out to me and have further conversation, of course, I'm interested in hearing more about you know, from the engineer's perspective, what are the barriers? Uh, what are like how? What are the feasible? What what's some opportunities? I guess uh, that we uh, in Peel might be able to kind of get get behind. Possibly, um, I know. You know, for instance, I'm having conversations now, uh, early days um, uh, on uh, possible you know reuse of commercial space um, to retrofit into. Residential. Uh, I know there's a whole host, whole lot of uh, issues with that, but post COVID, uh, the occupancy rates are going down in commercial, you know, office buildings. Um, we have a housing crisis. Uh, how could we rethink, right, um, in an innovative way, some of the existing infrastructure instead of, you know, approaching it in the way that we've always done things? Um, so, yeah, a few ideas. Thanks.